Welcome, welcome. It is Bible study time. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to Bible study. When Jesus was born, when he was born, welcome to Bible study. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Welcome to Wednesday evening Bible study. Thank you for taking this time to join us for our weekly Wednesday Bible study. Let me, let me invite you now to join me in a word of prayer. Gracious and kind and loving God, how we thank you for another expression of mercy and grace. Thank you that you continue to extend out the brilliant threads of our lives, that we can continue to enjoy the blessings and the privileges of life. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you that you continue to show favor upon us. God, we give you glory and honor and praise for being a God that is consistent, a God that is compassionate, God that has a sense of constancy. Now bless our time together as we share your word. In your name we pray, amen. On our resources page on the website, you will find a, this lesson. You can also find this lesson as well, I'm sure, on our Facebook page. It is lesson number 13 as we continue to talk about the kingdom principles, living in the kingdom principles. And we're studying parables. We're coming to the end of this parabolic teaching. Lesson 13, uh, the title is Getting Your Prayers Answered. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14 is the context of the lesson. Hear the story. Luke chapter 18, 9 through 14. And also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Jesus tells this parable in Luke chapter 18, and the writer entitled this lesson, Getting Your Prayers Answered. When God answers our prayers the way we expect, it increases our faith. When he does not answer our prayers, as we expect, he's training us to be more patient. I'm sure you're like me. I really like getting my prayers answered, but not just answered, but I like getting my prayers answered the way I prayed them. And I know you do too. But Jesus teaches us how to do this in this parable. In the previous parable, he taught about the importance of persistence prayer. But in this parable, about the Pharisees and the tax collector, our Lord gives us additional principles for prayer. Why does Jesus tell this parable? I think verse 9 is so important. 
And he spoke this parable to some. It wasn't spoken to all. But he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves. I mean, this parable was targeted at those who put more trust in themselves. They put more trust in the appearance of religion than they put more in religion itself. There is a proverb that says, a seen religion is not always a real religion, but a real religion is always seen. The Pharisees were good at having what I call a seen religion. You could tell they were religious by how they appeared, what they wore, how they behaved in the marketplaces. But a seen religion is not always a real religion. But a real religion is always seen. And I think you can see the real fact that the real religion of this Pharisee is seen in this parable. Verse 9 says that Jesus told this parable particularly to those who trusted in themselves and despised others. So the parable contains three vital, important principles as it relates to getting your prayers answered. There are, these are three precepts. These are not the only three things, but the writer suggests there are three things that helps to get out of prayer answered. The first one is, the writer says, in verses 10 through 12, avoid arrogance. Listen to verse 10 through 12. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. The other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. The first thing Jesus says, first thing the writer says, is avoid being arrogant in your life. Arrogance is not just an attitude. Arrogance is also an action. This Pharisee doesn't just have an attitude of superiority. He even has actions that indicate he thinks or he feels he's superior. This parable is about two men. One is a Pharisee. And that word Pharisee means separated. Pharisees separated themselves from ordinary people. And they devoted themselves just to themselves. They thought, the Pharisees thought, there was only one way to the top of religion, and they had the latter. They were just that arrogant. They were the largest and most influential religious group in Judaism. They controlled the synagogues. They exercised great control over the Jewish population. They were the ones who were primarily responsible for transforming Judaism from a religion of forgiveness through a sacrifice to become the cold letter of the law. They were religious and spiritually arrogant. They knew the law, but they could not live the law. Therefore, they missed the spirit of the law. They were anxious and quick to condemn people. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 25, verses 15a, Jesus calls them hypocrites. I think that's important to understand what a hypocrite is. Jesus called the Pharisees hypocrites. One translation says, about the word hypocrites, one translation says they were phonies. Now, the word hypocrite comes from the world of theater the world of uh, performance. And in the theater, the word hypocrite means one who pretends to be what he does not ever intend on being. It is really an actor. It is one who pretends to be something 
they would never they never intend on being. And Jesus called them hypocrites. The Pharisees were super religious. They felt that they were the epitome of what God expected of mortal man. As a result, these Pharisees were arrogant. They were just not arrogant toward people who were less than them in, in their turn. They were just not arrogant toward individuals. They were even arrogant with God. Their prayers were arrogant. In other words, here again, they were pretenders. They, they, they were actors. They had pretended to be what they pretended to be so long, they became comfortable in who they were pretending to be. And that's a good point there. Because sometimes you can pretend to be something so long that it becomes comfortable for you to keep up the hypocrisy. They pretended to be what they never was going to be, but they did it so long, they became comfortable in it. It became natural for them. As a matter of fact, in verses 10 to 12, when they go in to pray, they don't go in to pray. Uh, he doesn't go in to pray to thank God for his blessings. He goes in to pray and he brags about how much better he is than anybody else. Listen to what he says. He says, God, I thank you. I thank you that I'm better than these other folks. He had apparently just skipped the idea of the purpose of prayer and thought that prayer was a time for him to brag on himself. Because in other words, he doesn't, in his prayer, talk about the goodness of God toward him. He tells God how good he is. But notice, as he talks about how good he is, he talks about how good he is in contrast to somebody else that he knew, he knew for a fact, was not good. He tells God about, God, I thank you. He said, I thank you that I'm not like these other men. I'm not an extortioner, I'm not unjust, I'm not an adulterer, and God, I'm, I am not a tax collector. He brags or he tells God how good he is in contrast to someone who he knows and the entire world knows uh, they are less than being good. So he comes not to talk about his blessings, but he comes to boast to God about his own goodness. I fast twice a week. The Lord didn't require you but to fast once a week. I give all I got of my tithes. He is bragging about himself to God. You know, one of the things about prayer, I think, is that when we come before God, we need to brag on how good God is to us and not how good we are. He has this idea of being very sanctimonious. That's him. It's important to realize that 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 that. <laughs> That prayer is not about informing God of anything because you got to always remember if we understand who God is, God already knows what we're doing. Prayer at best is an opportunity where we present ourselves to God and we express our thoughts and our thanks to God for how good God has been to us. There used to be a bumper sticker that says, Honk if you love Jesus. The writer says he never liked that bumper sticker, but he liked the bumper sticker he saw that, that he saw. If you love Jesus, then you ought to tie. You don't see the old bumper sticker. So the Pharisee, the Pharisee did not love God because he was too in love with himself. The Pharisee did not love God because he was too in love with himself and what he was doing. And so he comes to God that in a spirit of arrogance, in a spirit of hypocrisy. He was too much in love with himself than he was with God. So the first thing we got to make sure is that we avoid the spirit of arrogance. 
And the spirit of arrogance is when we think that we are better than anybody else. When we, when we, when we have this attitude of I am good because I compare myself unto others who are, I know, I know, and the whole world knows, are less. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't compare himself to other Pharisees. He compares himself to someone that they looked upon and they knew they were tax collectors who had defrauded and cheated people. You know, you can always look good before God when you compare yourself to people who we know or who have images of being far less than good. So you got to avoid the spirit of arrogance. You got to humble yourself before God. The second thing that the writer suggests comes out of verse 13. We want our prayers answered. We got to ask God humbly. Listen to what verse 13 says. And the tax collector standing from afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. If you want your prayer to be answered, you got to be humble. You know, C.S. Lewis says, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Pride is always concerned with who is right, but humility is always concerned with what is right. Humility will open more doors for you than pride or arrogance ever will. I think one of the greatest stories about a person being humble is in Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 through 9 when that satirian comes to Jesus Jesus is doing what he do, does best. He's healing. And this centurion comes to Jesus. Now remember, he's a centurion. He's a Roman centurion. That word centurion means he has at least 100 men under him, 100 servants. And he said to Jesus, he says, my servant is sick. But then he says, I'm a man in authority. In other words, I'm a man with authority. I'm a man in authority. I'm a man with influence. I'm a man of power. But my servant is sick. Will you come and heal him? And Jesus is about to go heal him. And watch his humility. He says, no, Lord. Even though I'm a person of authority, I'm a person of influence, I'm a person of power, but my roof, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word from right here, and my servant will be healed. That's a picture of humility. Humility is a picture where uh, one, doesn't, one does not think less of themselves. One thinks of themselves lesser. I think it's important that in our prayer life we have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves in attitude. We have to humble ourselves before God. Listen to what that, what, what, what that tax collector said. He said very clearly, the Bible says that he won't even look his eyes up to heaven. As a matter of fact, he kept his head bowed down. And what he says in his prayer life, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. He was humble. He was humble. You know, one of the things that I think is that in our prayer life, we have to be humble. Now watch this. Humbling ourselves does not necessarily mean the posture we take in our prayer. Humbling ourselves has everything to do with the posture we take mentally and spiritually. Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. And even though he's a tax collector, he's a dishonest man, he recognizes that he's a sinner. He recognizes that he's done wrong. And therefore, he recognizes that as he stands before God, that he needs to ask God for mercy and forgiveness. I think that's important. He says, I'm a sinner. He owns it. He owns his mistake. He owns his faults and his failures. He doesn't, he doesn't give God or try to give God this impression that he's better than anybody else. He comes to God with a spirit of sorrow and sadness. Now listen as we close verse 14. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this man went down to his house justified more than the other. 
For anyone who exalts himself shall be humbled. He who humbles himself shall be exalted. If we want our prayers to be answered, we have to make sure that we avoid the spirit of arrogance. We have to avoid the idea that God blessed me because I deserve this. And we want our prayers to be answered. We've got to humble ourselves before God. We've got to own the mere fact that we are wretched, undone. We're sinners saved by grace. But last but not, not least, we've got to anticipate God's loving answer. Verse 14, Jesus says, when he heard the Pharisees' prayer, and he heard the, the publicans or the tax collector prayer, he says, Jesus says, now when they both left the temple, one man went home justified, and one man went home satisfied. The man who went home justified was the sinner. The Pharisees went home satisfied. Because he was satisfied with what he came and the way he came to God. He was satisfied because he was so righteous in himself. He was saying, well, I did my duty today. I did God a favor. I went to the temple. I prayed my arrogant prayer. I did my duty. The publican goes home justified. That word justified means the publican went home and he was made right or he was made straight with God because he was honest with God. To be justified means that God declares us righteous. We can't earn righteousness. Righteousness is not something we can earn. Righteousness is something that God has to declare us righteous. But God can only declare us righteous if we only admit and declare the mere fact that we are unrighteous. This, this publican, this tax collector, admitted to himself and to his God that he was a sinner. I want to remind you that we have been made righteous through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. It has been, it's because of the cross of Christ that you and I can experience the righteousness of God. Remember something that the, that the Bible says about the Pharisees, about the Jews in, in Romans chapter 10. He says, Romans chapter 10, Paul says, that the Jews have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. If they've been righteous in themselves, they establish their own righteousness. One of the things that we have to come to terms with is that we cannot establish our own righteousness. And, and we can do that, we can establish our own righteousness when we compare ourselves to the unrighteousness of other people. But the real righteousness that we need is the righteousness of God. And the only way we can get that, we have to own the mere fact, God, we are sinners, saved by grace. And as a result of us being honest with our sin, God answers our prayers. May I suggest to you that in your prayer life, in your life period, you got to avoid this idea of spiritual arrogance. And you gotta, you got to always... Seek God in a humble way. If you avoid arrogance, if you seek God humbly, you can anticipate God will answer your prayers. He may not answer them in the time frame you want it, and he may not always answer it the way you pray for it, but one thing you can rest assured of, God has a way of answering your prayers. I hope and pray that as you pray to God, you don't talk about how good you are. As you pray to God, you talk about how good he's been to you. As you pray to God, you don't compare yourself to somebody else. You compare yourself to the grace and the mercy of God. If you, if you, when, you when you pray, ask God, ask God to humble yourself and anticipate the mere fact that God will without a doubt answer your prayer. And he will answer it as he chooses to answer it. Amen. Amen. I need to encourage you. Avoid being a phony. Avoid arrogance. Ask God humbly. Anticipate God's answer.
I'm anticipating God to answer my prayers. But I'm also realizing that he may not answer it the way I want it. But I want to make sure that I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a phony. I fail, but I'm not a phony. I have flaws, but I'm not a phony. That times my faith is fragile, but I'm not a phony. I don't have to brag to God about what I do. He knows. I brag on God how good he is. God bless you, is my prayer. Peace and blessings be with you.